What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. And today we're going to do a little bit of talking about what it means to be a real gamer and whether or not you're supposed to hate on the competition. Now we've all been in competitions before. Growing up, I was in all kinds of competitions, selling candy for junior achievement, uh, you know, sports day, all this kind of stuff growing up. And then when you get a little bit older, it becomes competitive at work. You're trying to outwork your uh, co-workers for a better position. Uh, playing video games, you're trying to outwork someone. Uh, you know, you want to have the highest score. And I think competitive natures are a part of what the human experience is. And when it comes to gaming, some people take it a little too far. There are people out there who, who really root for PlayStation and they want Xbox to fail. And there are people out there who root for the Xbox and want the PlayStation to fail. Now, I'm not going to mention Nintendo just for reasons, but I think that really having that kind of attitude about gaming in general is the worst kind of thing you can think. You know, when one company fails, then the other company loses their motivation to get better. They lose their motivation to create. They lose their motivation to uh, cultivate new and exciting IP. When you're the only one, there is no competition. Whatever you put out is all people get. And a lot of people do not get that. But there's one guy on the playing field who's always maintained a very classy disposition and, and demeanor. And this guy is Phil Spencer. And Phil Spencer, man, I tell you, the, the train wreck that was Don Matrick, Phil Spencer came in and cleaned that up. You know, when Don Matrick came out and they announced what the Xbox One was, their original vision was so convoluted and nobody wanted it. Phil Spencer came in there, kicked Don Matrick out, and he streamlined the idea of what the Xbox One is now. No longer was it said, we're going to watch TV on this thing, we're going to play TV on this thing, TV, TV. They stopped doing that. They got back to the games. They talked about new IP. They talked about Halo. They talked about Gears. They talked about all these games that are coming to the Xbox One to get people excited. And Phil Spencer, guys, honestly, is my main, my number one reason that I, I own an Xbox One. He turned me completely around. He seemed like somebody who I, I, I could relate to. He seemed like somebody who honestly cared about the games. He didn't just let his position get to his head. He plays games. But another thing that he does that really... Uh, it speaks volumes about his character is when the competition does something amazing when they sell when they create an awesome game he lets them know that it's good work and he understands uh what it means to cultivate that kind of uh genius in the gaming atmosphere you know whenever a good game comes out doesn't matter who it's who it's made by phil spencer usually has something good to say about it and i think he's a very classy man and i'll drop a link in the description xbox boss praises playstation for Uncharted 4. Xbox boss Phil Spencer has been a big proponent of bringing together Xbox and PlayStation fan bases. In the past, he has praised Sony for its press conferences, its success with the PlayStation 4, and even said you're not a real gamer if you root for one console to fail over another. Continuing to lead by example, Spencer has sent a message to Naughty Dog and PlayStation's Shuhei Yoshida on Twitter, congratulating them on a job well done with Uncharted 4 at the end. In his tweet, he says, Congrats, Naughty Dog and Shuhei, on another great Uncharted, with Uncharted 4 amazing work. And Shuhei Yoshida thanked him and responded back by saying, Thanks, Phil. We'll see you at E3. Now, it was a nice little exchange because game recognizes game, as it were. Uncharted 4 launches on May 10th exclusively on PlayStation 4. Reviews for the game have been published, and the critics have showered Naughty Dog's latest with high praises. GameSpot scored it at a 10 out of 10. Critic Mike Maharty said, quote, In its writing, in its design, in its understanding of what makes games unique, Uncharted 4 is something to aspire to. It is a shining example and we'll be talking about it for years to come." End quote. Uncharted 4 is the last game in the series that Naughty Dog plans to make and the final one that stars Nathan Drake. However, there could be an Uncharted 5 and you better bet your ass there's an Uncharted 5. A lot of people say, oh man, it's over, you know, this is the last... There's no way in hell that Naughty Dog or another company is not making a new Uncharted. There's already been other companies that have made under other Uncharted games that were great. Uh, Golden Abyss on PlayStation Vita was not made by Naughty Dog, but it was still an Uncharted game. Uh, there are definitely other companies who could take the helm of Uncharted and make it great. But, but the gist of the story is, be a gamer. Be a gamer first. Don't be disillusioned by your love or your hate of a console. A console didn't do anything to you. My Xbox One has never done anything bad to me. It's never done anything horrible. It's only given me great experiences in gaming. I'm a gamer first. I enjoy playing my Xbox One. And Phil Spencer, he really, really brings light to the uh, to the Xbox community. Uh, a lot of these guys out here on YouTube can learn a lot from this man. 
He's a very classy gentleman. I always say that about him. And I look forward to whatever he's working on in the future with Xbox. You guys let me know what you think in the comments about this story. Phil Spencer, one hell of a guy. Uh, of course, Uncharted 4. I will be playing that on the 10th, and I'm sure you will too if you're on PlayStation 4. Be sure to give a thumbs up, show support for the channel. Follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook, and definitely subscribe. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time. Let it go.